Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys the Crossway ESV Heirloom Legacy in Horween leather, so stay tuned. All right guys, by now, if you follow my channel, you'll know that I am a big fan of these Horween editions from Crossway. This Legacy Edition I have left unmarked and unused because I wanted to be able to show what a brand new uh, edition looks like. And you can even see with me trying to keep it as untouched as possible, there are still markings on the cover. So if you are the type of person who likes your stuff without marks, it doesn't mean that you're left out of the, the loop, but this might not be your Bible. This might not be for you. With that said, uh, the Horween leather is amazing. It's underwhelming when you first get it because it's not broken in. It feels cheap. It feels uh, almost plasticky. You know, it, it has a dense cover, but if you don't know leather, it doesn't feel that significant. Now, once you start breaking this Bible in, you'll see the vast difference between this leather and other leathers. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys' comments in the comment section below how this is varied for some of you. This Bible is meant to be used on a daily basis. The cover is from a company called Horween Leather in Chicago. They produce some of the finest leather in the world. Uh, this specific leather is called Chrome XL or CXL. Let's take a really quick look at their facility and some of the tanning processes they have. Horween Leather was founded in 1905 by Isidore Horween. Back then, Chicago was a major hub for farming and the stockyards were there, so it became a hub for tanneries as a byproduct of the farming industry. And it's also situated next to Lake Michigan, which was and remains today an important water source for the tanning and dyeing process. Most of their business today is comprised of their signature Chrome XL leather, their sports leather for basketballs and footballs, and their world famous Shell Cordovan, which is the original product that built Horween. The building is shockingly simple. Horween moved one time in their history in 1920 to their current location, which is a 10 minute drive north from the Willis Tower in downtown Chicago. It's a maze of a building where you can see multiple additions over the years as they expanded when necessary. Everything starts as a raw hide. The hair is removed chemically with a washing drum and then pickled for 24 hours to help with the chrome setting. The leather is then split, shaved to smooth out, dried, and pressed. The chrome XL process is the same one Horween has used since 1913, and from the time a piece of hide arrives at Horween to completed chrome XL is about 30 days. From the sorting process that we just saw, the leather is taken to their first bath for chrome tanning. Once the leather is chrome tanned and dried, it's moved upstairs for coloring wax and polish. And this is where the oils and wax is added to the chrome XL leather through hot stuffing. The wax that they use is a natural lanolin. After the hot stuffing, it all goes to dry, which is done with just some warm air, no major machinery here. A piece of chrome XL leather will stay in this room for 10 days for the drying process. The leather is then hand finished and off to customers. This Chrome XL leather is special, especially in the way that it breaks in and it feels over time. You can already see we're handling this edition, even where I kind of push the yap down, there's uh, lightened areas around this yap training and it, and it holds, it really looks good. The spine has a really classic look, it has four raised ribs and it has blind stamping of Holy Bible the ESV logo, English Standard Version, and Crossway. I will say that this Chrome XL leather really takes the stamping well. Uh, I'm not sure why they did blind stamping instead of gold. I've said that in the Omega review, but the blind stamping is kind of growing on me. But the stamping is very crisp, clean, and deep. It's not superficial at all. It has perimeter edge stitching that looks really clean to me, as all these Bibles that are produced by Youngblood do has a really nice gilding and the art gilding is very clean and, and it has a really good color to it, which is really typical of these Youngblood productions. The yap is, is a really minimal semi yap. It's the same amount of yap as the Omega, but the Omega is a thinner block. So it looks like it has a larger yap in proportion to the block. It also has these stacked ribbons. I don't know why they did this. Uh, stacked ribbons, one is a bad idea to start with. Stacking tiny ribbons, you're asking for paper at the top of the block to be cut, torn from these tiny ribbons. There's a reason that all the evangelical Bible exclusive editions from Youngblood, they take out these small little 
pesky ribbons in the stacking method, and they go with a traditional side-by-side, -side, three or two significantly better ribbon layout. This liner is a grainier calfskin. Not really sure why, like I mentioned in the Omega review, why they didn't do an interior gilt line on these. I think that would look really special. They were probably wanting that clean look on the inside. I think that's a missed opportunity. I think having a gilt line is a good feature to have. Here you can see the edge line tab on the spine, and then we can open up this edition. This is a 2021 printing from Youngblood in the Netherlands, and this is the 2016 text of the Heirloom Single Column Legacy Edition. Now, the important part about this legacy is that it is a wide margin. It's a nine-point font with a single column text. It's essentially a non-verse-by-verse -verse preaching Bible with a nine-point font instead of a ten-point font. One cool thing, or not cool thing, depending on your perspective, they put the section headings in the margin. Now, if you use your margin for a lot of note-taking, you can see how this will get on your nerves because you want to have that space to make your own notes. You'd rather them kept the section headings in with the text like they do on every other ESV version. But you do have a substantial lower margin and side margin. Now you don't have much inner margin in the gutter, but the text at least is not creeping into the gutter. You have about a half an inch margin over the top of the text, a half an inch in the gutter, at least more than an inch on the bottom and about an inch on the side. Now here you can see in Matthew, this is a black letter text. I think that's a good thing because it appeals to a wider range of audiences. But I think this Horween edition is meant to do more than just appeal to the current Bible enthusiast. These editions are meant to introduce new people into the Bible enthusiast community. So I believe these editions are meant to actually grow the market. As with all my videos, it's time to give away a Bible. So if you're this person, you have won a Bible, shoot me an email and I'll get a Bible headed your way. Thank you guys for watching. It means so much to me. And if you would consider subscribing, hitting that notification bell and leave a like or two dislikes. And as always, take care. God bless.